Okay, it's our electrode boiler, water whistle board. I really like water whistles. This and bicolored sight glasses are, I think, really a great thing. Um, worked at one powerhouse at Spreader Stoker Boilers. You had five of them. A water whistle is really a great thing as there was no emergency shutoffs. All you had was drum level control and the boiler master running the boilers. The way a water whistle works, uh, if the drum level gets too low, the whistle will blow. It's a real loud, shrill whistle. If the drum level gets too high, the whistle will blow also. Works on the principle of displacement of water. There's a little difference in these two weights. As long as the lower weight is submerged, the two weights are balanced. Once this lower weight is exposed to steam or the water level drops down here, it becomes heavier, pulls down this rod, cam goes up and hits the whistle and blows the whistle. Likewise, if the level gets too high, this upper weight will start to float, uh, changes the weight between the two. This weight's heavier again, it'll pull up and blow the whistle. There's several different designs of these. This is a pretty simple design. It's every two rods and a lever that maintains the balance between them. But this works on this placement of water, so they're pretty foolproof. They work really well. Um, beginning of shift, once you shift, you open the drain valve. Just drain the level down, make sure the whistle works for low level. This is more of an older technology, I suppose. Some of the older boilers had this. But they're really a good thing if you're running a boiler that doesn't have an automatic shutdown of the fuel. Okay, it's our electrode boiler whiteboard. I'm talking about electrode boilers and water whistles. Um, these are like 1940s technology. They're great. I love them. Uh, electrode boilers are a lot newer technology. The whole key to electrode boiler, they come straight across the line. You have a breaker and amp meters. And that's it. There's no current control. This one ran 7200 volts, three phase, uh, but about 10 megawatts. There's all kinds of different capacities of these. Uh, the steam flow is controlled by conductivity and water level in the neutral tube. Uh, it's a neutral tube. Pressure changes in the control compartment, changes level in the neutral tube in the steam compartment. So the whole principle of operation is the conductivity of the water and the level in here. Uh, the current comes in, enough conductivity to move, the current goes across the neutral tube, resistance in the water causes heat, and the water is boiled. The way the control system works, you have a back pressure control valve on your steam out. If you get real high steam load and the pressure drops, it causes problems. So you try to maintain a constant pressure in here. Uh, the electric load controller, it looks at the steam out, balances that to the set point, uh, control your steam out valve. And then if you need more steam flow, it'll open up the pressure valve put more pressure in here. As this pressure goes up, it forces more water up in the neutral tube. Uh, it causes more current to flow, more heat generated, more steam produced. If you have too much steam, this valve closes. You start venting steam to a flash tank. Water level in here will lower. Take the level out of the neutral tube and it'll drop your current flow. Uh, you have a research pump. Basically, the feed water comes in here. Uh, your research pump picks up the cooler water, and each neutral tube has a water jet just to maintain water flow through here. There are holes in the bottom plate to allow water to move through, yet keep the straight currents from coming out through the boiler. Um, level control column is critical. These had to be between 17 and 19 inches to start. As your water level determines your current flow, you have to maintain a low level to not exceed the startup currents on these. The optimal conductivity is 125 micromoles. If you do not have enough conductivity, your boiler response will be sluggish. The conductivity is too low and the current won't flow across here. If you have too high of conductivity, you have to maintain a low water level, have poor response, and you'll have erosion. So these are Conductivity is really critical on these um, as it has a huge effect on the amount of current that can, water can conduct.
So you need really good um, conductivity control. This drawing here shows a conductivity transmitter. You have a constant sample flow going through. It runs your boiler blow down. If it gets too high, it dumps water. Uh, if it gets too low, it'll run the electrolyte pump and bring electrolyte in. You have a hydrazine transmitter. Hydrazine pump maintain hydrazine levels. Oxygen is really detrimental to these uh, for electrodes and the shells. So these two chemicals really have to be monitored and used. Uh, what's used for electrolyte? It's sodium phosphate. It's used to maintain a conductivity at 125 micromoles centimeter. These disodium and trisodium phosphate, they're used in a 2.5 to 1 sodium to phosphate molar ratio. Uh, this should give a pH around 10. Like I say, the pH, the conductivity is just huge for the operation and having all these control valves working correctly. Uh, if you have a problem not starting one of these, the level is probably too high. That can be a real big common problem. They're set to not start if your level gets too high or too low, so you have to be optimal on your level to start. But other than that, they, they work pretty good as long as you stay on your chemicals, make sure electrolyte tank is mixed correctly and it's full. They, they work pretty well unless they get too full. You flood, sometimes you will trip your breaker. Uh, it'll be a ground trip. Somehow you got moisture up in here, so you have to dry it out. You have to mega this first to check for any leakage to ground and then about the dry out. About the big problem I've seen is uh, really high levels getting moisture up here and causing problems. Other than that, they work pretty good.